Hi, you're listening to the My Body, My Story podcast. And yeah, I think we're not taught to listen to our own voices enough. We're, we're taught to listen to the voices of others, you know, whether it be social media, magazines, um, celebrities, or whether it's people in your real life. This is the 45 over 45 chapter where we celebrate rule breakers and role models, the women who inspire us to live life our way and to show their sensuality, beauty, soul, and true essence. Here, we talk about what it's like to be 45 plus, adjusting to the changes that come with time, and we listen to the stories of our participants. If you have an interesting story, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us at info at alexandrawalker.com. That's Alexandra spelt with a K-S. Or visit our website, alexandrawalker.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the My Body, My Story project and today with us in the studio TJ and while she's sitting in the makeup chair and Nicole is doing magic on her (laughs) and makeup and hair, I'll be asking her a few questions. Um, Hi TJ. Hi. Welcome to the studio, welcome to the project. Um, Thank you for having me. And let's start and tell us 10 facts about yourself. Um, um, I'm 47 in April this year. Mm -hmm. I was born and raised in Lithgow, New South Wales in the Blue Mountains. Mm -hmm. I'm the third daughter um, of my parents are still together and our names all start with T. Um, I go by TJ, which stands for Tamara Joanne. Um, I'm a C-suite executive assistant and I currently work for the CEO of Newcastle Airport. Um, I'm recently separated. I have two biological sons, 23 and 20, and two stepdaughters, 26 and 23, a daughter-in-law to be, and a wonderful little grandson named Bodhi, who was just born a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and I know that uh, he was the reason why we had to change the date for your shoot. It is the reason. (laughs) Um, My nana name is Glamour, which stands for Glamour Grandma, and I totally identify with this. Um, I have two cats um, that are 10 years old, a brother and sister named Mario and Peach, and they are my full-time indoor companions. Oh, nice. (laughs) Um, My passion um, is encouraging others, uh, lifting others up, reminding people of what they have to be grateful for and to find the gold in all situations. I'm a people person, um, however, still an introverted extrovert. Mm -hmm. It seriously does make sense. (laughs) I'm extroverted around people that I know and I'm comfortable with and introverted the balance of the time. I'm a background girl 100% and I'm happily cheering people in the background. I can't relate. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, sounds interesting. So um, I know that you're supposed to come like, uh, I think it was a week ago. Oh, and suddenly you texted us that <laughs> your son and daughter-in-law are in the hospital and about to deliver your grandson unexpectedly. Yes. So how are you feeling as a grandma in the, in, at your new role as a grandma? <laughs> I feel wonderful. I just can't believe that 20 years has passed me by yeah. um, and how I could possibly be a grandma yet. But here we are. At and 47. At 47 almost. And he is lovely. He is absolutely delicious. And... Mm. It's just been the best thing to ever happen. <laughs> was, is it? I was. I'm, I'm always wondering because I'm not a grandma yet. <laughs> Hopefully one day. Uh, do, is it a different feeling like when you have your first born yeah. uh, child uh, compared to your first born grandson or granddaughter? Yeah, it is. Um, it's funny though. The love that you have for your children. Just I can't believe how much it can extend out into the love for your grandchildren. So so quickly and so suddenly and all of those feelings come straight back and it's amazing how it takes you straight back to when you had yours like even though it's 20 and 23 years ago I remember it like it was yesterday and all the smells and the sounds and everything just takes you straight back to being a mum Um, and my daughter-in-law Mackenzie um, she just did such an amazing she just did amazing and I'm just so grateful for her um for what she's gone through to bring me a grandson. I'm just, yeah, I'll be forever grateful. Oh, that's so nice. And so you mentioned that you're 47 years old, that's still young, but obviously we're entering stage of aging and uh, since we're born, (laughs) I think. (laughs) And so what does aging means to you? 
Um, I don't know, I was thinking about that and I was thinking older, wiser, I'm not sure. You know, how has 23 years passed me by? Because like I was just saying, I still remember when my eldest was born and I can't believe I'm old enough to be a, a glamour. Mm -hmm. um, I like to think that getting older means increasing, um, increasing in my knowledge, my trust, my faith, mm -hmm. and my resilience. Um, even though going through what we do to be resilient always kills us in the process, um, not to sound all metaphorical, but like a diamond in the fire, mm -hmm. which actually means reflective light. And I, I really like the sound of that, the reflective light that I sparkle and shine. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> so if you could go back to any age, uh, what age it would be and what advice would you give yourself at this age? I would definitely be 15 again. No. <laughs> it was such a pivotal time for me. Um, I went through quite a number of life events halfway through turning 15 and turning 16 mm -hmm. um, and I would take it all back to before then. I would be more innocent in so many ways and my pop would still be around. Mm -hmm. um, advice. I'm so great at giving advice to others, <laughs> but not so great of taking any of it in myself. Um, Self-love and respect are so important um, and it doesn't mean you're being selfish and it's not a negative. Mm. Um, this can be done in the right way, but we just aren't taught how. Our, our default context is that it's selfish or self-love or self-centered to love yourself mm -hmm. and it's totally not. Um, self-love is self-care um, and care of self is one of the most important things. You know, how can you feel from an empty cup? Mm. Um, we need new content, um, speak from a newly created content and change our mindset to support the new way of being. Yeah, so it's good that if uh, young people can hear us, um, listen to this podcast where yeah. so many women share similar, uh, similar points, you know, and saying like, I wish I was more um, confident or more loving myself, but why do you think it's important to give this advice at this age of 15? Like, uh, what happened? I think there's just other influences that come in and around that time. Mm -hmm. um, it's no longer just your parents. You've got friendship groups. There's, um, you know, there's love interests. There's, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you've got, you're just doing other things. You, you're getting more um, freedom to do other things, mm -hmm. um, you know, because you're coming to a certain age where you're allowed out a bit more or you're, you know, you don't have um, as long, um, tight a curfew or something. So it's just such a pivotal age, 15, mm -hmm. 16. You're not quite old enough as an adult, but you're still, you're not a little kid anymore. Yeah. And it's such a pivotal time where we make decisions around things for ourselves. You know, we're starting to learn to trust ourselves and trust our own judgment more. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I think we're not taught to listen to our own voices enough. We're taught to listen to the voices of others, um, you know, whether it be social media, magazines, um, celebrities, or whether it's people in your real life. I just sometimes think we're not, we're not encouraged enough to listen to our own voices and work out what they're saying. Mm. So do you think that uh, these are the main causes of our body image issues as well? Like the media, you, you mentioned media, peer group, or like... What are yeah. the causes for the yeah. body issues we have? Yeah, I, th I think largely it's the environment um, that you surround you, mm -hmm. that you're in and who you surround yourself with um, and what kind of self-talk you have, what you allow, um, how we've been spoken to or at. Um, I really love some of the new generation, like loving themselves sick. <laughs> I wish I had half their confidence. Um, social media, it's, it's not new, it's just digital now. Um, the old social media, like we said, was the magazines like Sports Illustrated with the swimsuit editions um, telling us what they perceived was beautiful. Yeah. Um, you know, models could only be a certain height, shape and style and if you didn't fit the mould then you had no hope. But you mentioned that the new generation is more confident but uh, I'm very careful with um, um, being happy for that because I'm just always thinking, is that true confidence or is the mantra they repeat also influenced by a uh, new wave of social media that you use this body positive movements and you have to love yourself? Is the true loving 
uh, themselves or it's more of a you know like a religion that's yeah. my question you know yeah. how to define uh, is that for real or yeah absolutely I mean it's hard it's hard to define isn't it it's hard to work out whether that's the new um, whether that's the new self-talk that's mm -hmm. the new mantra or whether it's real you know um, are they being encouraged to step into these other things the body positivity and you know they've got all these celebrities like Lizzo and um, mm. you know there's just so much of it going around you know uh, is it still what they want to say to themselves is it still how they feel mm. or are they being influenced by these things I still think it's got a lot to do with what you put in like what you listen to what you watch um, what your environment is yeah. that's a, such a big um, a big factor yeah because my concern is that uh, this posi body positive movement uh, sometimes people are using as an excuse for not taking care of themselves absolutely there, there's definitely a danger there with that um, you know I still think um, you know people need to um, be careful how they take care of themselves their, their mental health and their physical health mm -hmm. is still um, should be a, a top priority yeah um, you know just because you might be um, not model material doesn't mean that you shouldn't look after yourself and put and put your health and well-being first yeah. you know it's still good to um, eat well eat a balanced diet and exercise it's still good there's there's so much um, evidence to say that these things are good. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine that your body could talk, what do you think it would ask you or tell you? Um, I think it would tell me to trust my instincts. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't feel right, then there's a reason for that. Um, I don't care about your age. We've all got this inside of us. We just aren't taught to listen to it and we just listen to so much of what other people say. Mm -hmm. You know, even if you might tell a friend or a family member, if they don't agree, you know, they can teach you not to trust your, trust your instincts. Yeah. Um, and it's physical feel. It's right? a physical feeling, yeah. yeah. And I think we, we need to pause and, and ponder on what that is. What, what is it that it's trying to tell us? It's like, you know, for me, it's like electricity that can run mm -hmm. through you at times, you know, in, in the pit of my stomach. Um, my body would tell me to stop so that's that pause just mm -hmm. stop um stop being so judgmental stop being so um self-critical and stop being sorry for what the past has brought me it would tell me that i'm okay mm -hmm. i'm safe and that i matter um and it would tell me that boundaries are okay no matter who they are with or what the reasons are boundaries are a form of self-care mm -hmm. even with those closest to you and I think it's even more important for those in your intimate space. Yeah, that's true. Nicely said. So how do you think uh, negative body image can affect any relationship, like intimate relationship, friendships, peer relationship, work space? Like, do you believe it can cause any damage to the relationship? Yeah, I think in um, definitely in some situations it can. Um, it can cause such a divide, um, intentionally or unintentionally. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you might sit and worry and think, oh gosh, you know, does my partner think I'm looking old or are they looking at my flabby tummy? They could seriously be sitting there and thinking how lucky they are to have you in their life mm -hmm. um, or thinking of what they want for dinner. But our negative thoughts get in the way and stop us from communicating because uh, we believe the lies our minds tell us and sometimes... For me, it just yells so loud, it drowns out all the good. Um, partners um, and people in your space can get um, frustrated with the negative criticism that some mm -hmm. people go through. Um, they don't know how to um, help us move through that and they feel caught. They feel damned if they do and damned if they don't. Mm -hmm. um, if you've got a partner that you feel safe with, then this makes it easier to talk about where your mind goes and what kind of things you think and they can journey alongside you. And, that's the kind of relationship that I'm looking for. Yeah. How do you overcome your body-related insecurities when they come up? And uh, has it changed with age? Like, mm, yeah, I am. Um, what's the ways of? Yeah, I I find that I 
do this with great difficulty. Um, I struggle at times with crippling anxiety and um, I hold my breath and I clench my jaw. Um, I try to be really self-aware. If I notice I'm doing it, I stop and take that big breath in, breath out. Mm -hmm. What can I see, touch, hear, smell? And I deliberately like loosen my jaw. Mm -hmm. I try to remember the good part of my body, uh, that my body's done for me. Um, I dislike my stomach <laughs> immensely. Um, I was chatting to you about that before, uh, but it brought me two amazing boys um, and went through nine operations due to um, endometriosis mm -hmm. between the ages of 19 and 30, which resulted in a hysterectomy at the young age of 30. Mm -hmm. um, I talk to people that I trust. I tell them what's happening for me. My elder sister is my biggest champion and has some serious flair and confidence. Mm -hmm. And she says, you can do whatever you want, wear whatever you want, as long as you do it with confidence. Um, one of my best friends um, is great to talk to in these situations. Um, she once said to me, the next time you feel this way, remember that you're talking to the person that I love and I won't allow you to talk to her that way. <laughs> um, and that's really stuck with me ever since that. Um, it's really gotten me through some negative moments. You know, she said, you would never speak like that to anyone else. You would never speak like that to me. I've never heard those words out of your mouth. She said, so why do you talk to yourself like that? Mm. And it was just really interesting. It does make me stop and think, why do I talk to myself like that when I, she's right, I would never to anyone else. Yeah, but you may think about somebody else the same. It just out being polite, you may not say that. No, I'm, I just don't, I don't think that way. You don't, my, you don't even think that way. No, my mm -hmm. brain just doesn't go there, but only towards myself. Mm. Interesting, the sound has how sometimes we can be so hard on ourselves and you know as you know it's a common saying like we're the worst critics of ourselves but uh, it just uh, for me it's always interesting why we allow to criticize ourselves that bad you know this yeah uh, yeah like where did we pick that up from where did we where did that first start yeah, th that would be interesting to, to discover because when the baby is born uh, like they they don't criticize themselves yeah. yeah like sometimes adult people who behave like children they don't know yeah sometimes they don't know the um, limits you know but they say oh you behave like a baby they don't even think like oh that's bad that I'm doing something bad they just do because they feel like it yeah yeah I think it's to do maybe with the norms and restrictions the society put on us and somehow it develops into this bad self-talk yeah 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 it's really awful it's just something we've got to unlearn yeah so because maybe it's we've been taught it's not good to talk bad about other people but nobody said that it's bad to talk yeah bad that's thing right about ourselves yeah so my last question, and uh, it's the favorite one for me. Uh, what's your favorite quote about being a woman or saying, or maybe a thought? Um, so I absolutely love Dolly Parton. And she said once, find out who you are and do it on purpose. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and your story. And I hope you will enjoy the rest of your day and your photo shoot and you will see yourself differently. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Thank you. If you have an interesting story, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us at info at alexandrawalker.com. That's Alexandra spelt with a K-S. Or visit our website, alexandrawalker.com.